Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to part two of my four-part Stardew Valley min-max guide. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the first video which includes days one through seven of spring year one. The link is in the description down below. This video covers days eight through 14. All of the footage is unedited so you can see every detail that happened. It is just sped up to 600% for time's sake. My commentary on tips and tricks are sprinkled throughout the video, but you can check the pinned comment below for important timestamps. The trickiest part of this run was definitely in the first quarter of spring, but there are still a few things to note throughout. I also think it's useful to show what sort of luck I did or didn't have. Day 8 just starts out with watering of crops again. The best items to eat for energy are your highest to lowest parsnips, then highest to lowest chubs. One regret I have from this run is not fully understanding the usefulness of chubs at the time. I ended up selling too many of them and quickly ran out of food. If this happens, it's not the end of the world. You'll just possibly need to spend some time fishing in the mornings if you didn't get enough food drops from the mines. Once you're done tending to your crops, go get your pickaxe from Clint and head to the mines. Whenever you have enough copper ore and stone, start making furnaces and place them next to your elevator. You're not going to need any more copper bars for a while, so it's okay to use it all on furnaces so you can start smelting iron, quartz, and gold. If you don't have any money to lose, you can continue mining until you pass out. Otherwise, make sure to head back home in time to go to bed. Day 9 is rinse and repeat. I went to fish for a bit at the mountain lake before heading to the mines, but if you have enough food for the day, you can skip that part. The rest of the day is just spent getting down into the mines as far as possible. Make sure you've either collected a torch or can make one before you get to levels 30 through 40, as it's incredibly difficult to find staircases without one. Whenever you hit a new level with railroad tracks, always go down to the end of the tracks and collect the coal before using a staircase. Coal is going to be very precious to us, so it's important to get as much as possible. At this point, you probably have at least a couple hundred stone on you. I recommend carrying the whole stack with you all of the time in the mines. At the end of the day, if I'm one or two levels away from another elevator service floor, I'll use my stone to make a staircase to get there so I don't have to repeat the entire five levels the next day. This is especially important for the levels that are infested with enemies, and the only way to unlock a staircase is to kill everything. Just make a staircase immediately upon discovering one of these levels as it's a huge waste of time for very little reward. At this point of the run, the only other thing you're going to use the stone for is making furnaces, so don't be afraid to use this tactic.
Day 10 is another day of mostly the same. I actually ran out of food before I could even water all of my plants. I had to make sure to fish up enough food and get back to my farm in time at night to finish up watering. This was a huge annoyance throughout this portion of my run, definitely something I'll be more wary of in the future. Day 11 is more of the same. I managed to get to level 50 in the mines by the end of the day, but with any luck you'll be farther along than I am. While you should normally try to avoid enemies whenever possible to save time, when you're in the ice levels I recommend always going after the dust sprites. They have a very high chance to drop coal, which is probably the most reliable way to get it at this point in the game. Make sure you're constantly putting your furnaces to work for as long as you have the materials to keep up with it. Ultimately, you'll want to maintain an equal ratio of iron, refined quartz, and gold bars. Don't forget that fire quartz will smelt into three refined quartz bars, so it's a good way to save on coal. If it's getting near the end of the day, and you know you're not going to make it to the next elevator service level, you can repeatedly farm levels 41 or 21 for some easy iron or copper.
Day 12 is harvest time. Gather all your potatoes or kale and water any remaining mixed seed crops. This should get you to level 6 farming, so you'll be able to make quality sprinklers starting tomorrow. At the end of the day, choose the tiller profession for increased crop value. While potatoes aren't the most efficient crop to eat, I took a chunk of mine to the mines with me so I didn't have to waste time fishing. Any leftovers that you don't think you'll need, be sure to throw in your bin before you go to bed as you won't be able to sell anything to Pierre tomorrow. I reached level 65 in the mines today. If you've managed to get to level 80 by now, that's fantastic, but don't worry if not because we won't need to plant strawberries right away. On day 13, Demetrius shows up at your door. I don't know that it makes a huge difference whether you choose mushrooms or fruit bats, but I tend to go the mushroom route so I can sell the red mushrooms and eat the common brown ones for energy. Water your leftover crops and go to the mines for a few hours. Whatever you choose to do this morning, just make sure you get to the egg festival before it ends at 2 p.m. Once there, spend all your gold on strawberry seeds. I ended up with 307. If you like participating in the egg hunt, go ahead and do so. It doesn't make a difference for the run either way, besides potentially feeling more driven because you're wearing a cool hat that proves you beat Abigail at her antics. I spend the rest of the night clearing nearby space on my farm for future planting.
day 14 is spent entirely in the mines. You can plant strawberries if you want, but overall you won't get any more harvests without fertilizer than if you plant and water on day 16. The only benefit you get by doing this is receiving money sooner if you need it for something else. I chose to wait so that I could spend my time getting to the gold levels in the mines. Whenever it is that you manage to get to level 80, don't worry about going down any farther. At this point, you can farm levels 21, 41, and 81 for whichever ore you need the most. Keep in mind that you'll need to start smelting your gold by around 5 p.m. if you want to take the bars with you at the end of the day. Always be sure to drop as much gold ore into the furnaces as you can before you leave for the night. That's going to be it for this portion of the guide. Stay tuned for part three. If you enjoyed this guide, but you'd like to see a short and sweet version as well, let me know in the comments below. And if there's enough demand, I'll be sure to make one. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future guides. If you're interested in seeing my Stardew Valley Let's Play series, check out my playlist below. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay foxy.